Kia ora, welcome to Bus Taz. It's full summer here and I really need to find some motivation to do this bus. There's a bunch of tools in here. No motivation though. The fireplace is sitting here. Still pretty hard to get motivated to do anything on that when it's 30 degrees. There's a whole bunch of stuff I've taken out of the bus that needs to at some point go back in the bus. But still, not feeling motivated. I've even got these solar panels here. Getting a little bit more excited. Actually, actually, I was fiddling around trying to get a 24 volt setup to do some solar panel tests oh yeah that is 24 volts pretty flat maybe just maybe even my poor saw bench is looking more like a storage bench what about under here Maybe there's some motivation under here. No, just a hole perfect for a water tank, but no motivation to buy one and put it in. And inside, well, we do need to do some carpeting at the rear. Maybe that. Here's a bit of a side issue. I've persevered with this liquid rubber product. Um, I don't really like to bag any product, but this stuff it just doesn't set. I mean, you can still see there's a glossiness there, and it's still sticky. It's still very sticky to the extent that if I sit there for a minute or two, it will stick to my pants. Because it's kind of not set, my pants will then stick to everything else I sit down on and leave black marks everywhere. So, not impressed. Does certainly appear to be very, very waterproof. Well, except where it's come off and stuck to my pants. So, I have kind of persevered with it. But any thoughts of leaving it exposed are well and truly gone. So the whole lot's going to have to be covered up with something better. To that end, I've started carpeting. Um, I don't know if you can tell. It's very dark in there. But we've started carpeting the insides of these boxes. Um, Hope and I started this. Uh, this is just a, a, a foam backed kind of. It's quite a nice looking carpet actually. We should have bought more of it. We bought it really cheap at some sale. And so we've been sticking that on. We've got that on in the insides of these cabinets. And this one, although it's even harder to see. <coughs> And we need to cap it all of the rest of this back end so that it's no longer sticky. So we might get into that. That's probably a better view of the carpeting that we've done. Just to give you an idea, this floor was painted with this liquid rubber back in uh, three months ago, at least three months ago. And it's still that sticky. Actually, now that I've got the carpet out, I think I've changed my mind. I think I'm going to build a kind of a draw thing to go in this gap here. Now, it needs to be quite strong because what I want to do is I want to pull it out and use it as a step to get up onto the bed. So yeah, I think I'll do that. Another fresh sheet of ply, another scary first cut. Um, 
and of course we have to get it right. So if I'm going to cut through here, then I will be cutting on the far side of the blade, which is 38 mils to this side, and another 2 mils for the blade. So that should be 40 mils. So that means I need to measure 40 mils more than the piece I want to end up cut off. I'm thinking 320 for this particular bit, so I need it at 360. Perfect. So the next cut is 540. So that's 540 plus 40 for the saw it means I space it at 580. For dealing with a whole sheet of ply there's no doubt the skilly and a straight edge is the way to go. With a 40 tooth blade it cuts real nice and uh, it's just the sheet's just too big to put across the table saw. But once I've knocked it down to a strip like this or like this, then the table saw is really easy. Okay, I don't usually get quite this tricky in my designs, but here's what I've done. So here's a box. Now, that's not that fantastic, it's just a box. I've cut the four sides all at 540 long by 320 high. Now the box is going to be slightly longer in one direction than the other because it's got two sides where two sides butting up to the ends. So the ends go like this. So that means it's actually, uh, this is 18 mil ply. I want it strong because I want to be able to climb on this box. Um, so 18 mil ply at each end of 540 is another 36, so that's 576. So, so I just cut a strip off of this piece of ply at 540 wide. This ply is 1220 by 2440 or something like that. So I cut a 1220mm long strip of 540 wide. I then cut a piece of that off at 576 and what I get left with is two pieces at 320. So I had absolutely zero waste but I also had no space for error because I had an extra 4 mils, which was the thickness of the blade for two cuts. Confusing I know, just I was pretty stoked it worked out that way. It's pretty rare I get so little waste. So after cutting the pieces I need for that box, my total waste is, well not really waste, but my off cut in this case is 320 by uh, at 175 I think. Let's get to putting this together and um, I'll give you one guess what method I will use. Yep, pocket holes. I've actually put a little pencil mark here on the piece of wood where I want it to uh, just line up with that white line and you can see there. That gets it in the right spot. Flip the clamp closed. <coughs> It's just a simple over center clamp, so provided you've got it set at the right distance, it will flip over center and lock into place. Then I just need to drill a hole. Now the guide will direct the drill into the right angle, and the stop here will make sure it stops at the right depth, which is right there. So the drill comes through on the exact right angle to the exact right depth and cuts a nice little pocket hole with a pilot hole ready to put the screw in. A few more of those and I'll be ready to zip it all together. So when you're trying to screw through one piece into another piece, the first thing that happens is 
the screw, as it tries to bite into the bottom piece of wood, will lift up the top piece, just a touch. And then it'll pull it down tight, which is fine, provided it lands back in the exact right spot. With a pocket hole, because the screw's coming in on an angle, all of that happens on a slight angle and it kind of, it doesn't end up in the right spot. Simplest way to put it. So you need to clamp the two pieces of wood together and be sure that they cannot move during the assembly process. Now, I've got some clamps, but they are just never quite long enough. But I've got this fancy corner clamp, and it's great for doing pocket holes. Just line it up, tighten it up, and we're ready to go. The joint won't move while I screw it together. There's just enough clearance in here to get in with my screwdriver, so we should be fine. Except I don't want to run a bead of glue down that edge first. Oh, and one more thing to note. I'm not very good at measuring or cutting, so nothing I do is ever perfect, which means there's a slight gap here of maybe about half a millimetre. Now, I want the top to be nice and flush, so I'm working with the top there, and this becomes the bottom, and uh, then I can hide my little error. Simple bead of glue. Spread out of my little fancy glue spreader. So here's my box, and believe it or not, 790, 790, it's even square. <laughs> there is one thing that's happened. I've drilled a total of 12 holes, and uh, usually if I get past 10, I get one of them wrong. And it's not so much that it's wrong, it's just that that bottom one there is a little higher up from the bottom than it should be. I used the wrong hole in the pocket hole jig, and uh, anyway, other than that, it looks good. From the outside, no holes at all. Of course, that's why we do it, isn't it? Check on a base, now that is a box. The base is only 9mm thick. Um, really, it's just got to support what's in it, which will be clothes and shit. So, it should be fine. The lid I'm going to stand on, so that needs to be stronger. So, right way up. Um, Needs a lid. Alright, now there we have a cube more than capable of supporting my weight. I think these edges could be maybe round. Yeah, I think round would be nice. Let's get the router out. So, when I bought this router, off of another guy second hand he said I shouldn't use it because it's too big and too powerful and uh, I think he was wrong it's fantastic however a piece of good advice I did get was router bits are really expensive these ca things can be fifty hundred dollars each and uh, that's a lot of money and some really good advice I got was buy a cheap crappy set with lots of bits in them and work out the ones that you wear out and buy good ones of those. Well, I did that and um, actually this may not be a crappy set but because the, it had been dropped and the box had a big crack in the lid, I got it very cheap and haven't yet worn out any of them. So if you're thinking about buying a router and thinking about buying router bits, Make sure you buy a really good little set with lots of different bits in and you'll work out quite quickly the ones you use. Uh, there's a few here I've never used and there's a few like this one that have had a real good thrashing. This is a 9mm radius 
which is perfect for this job here. So I've simply clamped this to my saw table to stop it squirming around and I'm going to buzz the rat around the outside just to give it a nice radius edge here. Now I need to respect the rotation of the router which will be in that direction which will be like that which means I need to go that way. I'm not going to show you that because that's noisy and messy but I will show you what it looks like when I've done it. And of course I'm wearing appropriate safety equipment. Look at how nice it is. I love that router. I mean plywood's not the nicest thing to hit with a router anyway because it's kind of all across grain but it still looks pretty cool. A little bit of sanding that's going to look magic. Just need to put an edge on the inside of that lid so that it won't slide off. So now I want a little hand hole so I'm just going to cut a slot kind of there with the router of course taking my usual approach of fencing it up so the router can only go where I want it to be. So here's a little tip I've learnt the hard way with these router bits. Actually it's not really fair to say that I've learnt anything because I've made the same mistake twice now so maybe I didn't learn anything at all. But maybe you can learn from my mistakes. Now what happens with this is it uses the, the bearing here as a guide. Now that locates it. I'll show you what I mean. So when this router is running along the edge here, it's using that bearing to... running along, the, the bearing runs along this edge and that defines how deep the router cut goes. So you kind of can't get it wrong. You run along that edge and you end up with the perfect rounded edge as, as you can see here. And that's what I've done here for this handle. And that's gone fine. However, what I thought is when I put my hand through it, it'd be nice to have a similarly rounded edge on the back. So I flip it over and I do it again. Now, the problem with that is when I go to run my router, uh, the bearing on this router against the inner edge, the inner edge is already gone. So now, in fact, it's running kind of in, in no man's land. And what it means is that instead of getting a nice 9mm uh, radius, I've come in a hell of a lot further than I ever expected. And in this case, it's on the bottom half of a handle, and it actually makes the handle fit quite nice, so that's fine. But if I were to do it on this edge, I would not be at all getting the... Um, the result I was expecting because because this bearing uh, as it cuts in will be rubbing not against the straight edge but against um, a piece that's already been cut away. So a bit of a trap there. In this case it doesn't matter because one you can't see it and two it actually still makes a really nice handle. Sand it up and ready for painting. So my usual trick, get everything out and ready and walk away. Hopefully that'll be painted maybe tomorrow. Well it sure feels good to uh, get back into the bus and achieve something. So. We'll have a look at that step again when uh, Hope's painted it. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to use this energy I've found and get into some more projects. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can like and subscribe, press all the buttons. And hopefully that means we'll see you again soon. Take care. Matewa.